So we've got a 99 Dodge Ram 2500. Both seat belts are locked up. And that is caused by a servo that is in the seat belt inside here. Now you can rip the seat covers off, at least I've heard, I haven't done it, and remove the servo. Or you can do the fix that I'm going to do, which is a slight rewiring. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing that. Um, as you can see, seat belts are locked. The key factor here is that they're both locked, so it's not a servo failure. The other side is locked as well. So that uh, points to um, the controller module, which is the seat belt controller mo timer module, I believe they call it which is located under your center console seat here which I've removed to give some space you remove it by there are four bolts let's see if you can see there's one here one here one there they come out from below uh, they look like this here and I'm, let me see if I can uh, there's the bolt and I believe that I had the sockets here. I don't remember exactly what I used to pull those out. Uh, I'll get that. I'll get that in a second here. All right. So the socket was a nine sixteenths to get the center console out. Now I don't think you actually have to take the center console out. I took it out to. Uh, just get some more space, make it a little bit easier to work on this stuff. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to do this as I went into it, so I wanted to be able to uh, just have plenty of space to work. So this is the unit actually right here that the center console sits on. I'll get a backup view of it. You can kind of see how it sits there on these things. This is actually backwards right now. This is the cup holder that normally goes to the back seat. Anyway, so that's that's removed. Pulled those out, it's just those four bolts. Whole seat lifts off. And you get a, uh, normally right here, there would be the seat belt controller module, which I've already pulled out. I know it's bad, I've tested it uh, with a multimeter. And um, you really can't replace those or fix them, um, from what I understand. And so I am going to do a rewiring that bypasses it. All right, this right here is the seat belt controller module module that went bad. Let's see, we got. And I opened it up just to take a look at it, and that is what is inside. If you dump it over here, no, can't get it open, but. You can just see that there's a ball, a little metal ball in there, and I'm guessing there's something wrong with one of the solders on this board, but I can't figure it out, and so that's why we're going to bypass it. Anyways, that's not important, but this was mounted <clears throat> um, like this on that right there, so I just took it off and probably just not going to not gonna put it back. Now to the wiring. So we've got here this is the wiring harness that went into the seat belt controller module and after testing I've realized that this pink wire has continuous 12 volt power to it um, so if you connect this to the uh, seat belt um, wire which I've already cut a couple connections here um, you actually, it'll release. As long as you have a, a good ground, you got to connect it to the ground as well. So, but you don't want this pink wire because it's always got 12 volt to it, which means that it'll eventually drain your battery. I don't know how fast. It may, may take a while, but, you know, if you've got 12 volt power going to a servo for an extended period of time, it probably will eventually drain your battery. So, the other thing is there was a, a, a blue wire, which I've already pulled out. And I'll show you how I did that. <clears throat> the blue wire is currently connected um, right here. You can see this end of the blue wire coming out of the wiring harness. I removed it from this 
connector and just connected it to the orange wire that goes to the seat belt and then I also took the ground which is the black and green which is right here you can see it behind that is the ground and so this blue wire only gets 12 volt if the ignition is on so right now my seat belts are locked no key in the ignition put the key in the ignition turn it seat belts are now unlocked so I I still have to do it to the other seat belt connector that's going to the passenger side seat shut that off so what I'm going to do here I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to cut these two wires this connector I'm sure I probably could have bought another connector and and actually brought the blue wire into the connector on the ground um, but I didn't do that so I'm just going to go ahead and use some these wire nuts here for the time being I may buy a connector later but uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cut these off this is your this is your 12 volt power the the orange and red and uh, the green and black again is your ground so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off and connect them back up so now we turn the key We've got a working seat belt still locks up still functional just not going not locked so here is the support for the center console seat um, I've got it back in the same location it was before just thought I'd show this since I had already had it out before and I'm getting ready to put the seat on top of it um, but you just line up those bolts and you can see the wiring harness is just sitting underneath everything is connected I taped it all together really tightly so we don't have a chance of losing that connection again and then we're just gonna put the seat back on alright center console seat is back in a couple of quick things a correction on the bolt size that holds those in those four bolts are half inch actually you definitely want to have a half inch um, and you want to make sure you pull these seat belts and lace them through the side thing um, as you're getting them in there otherwise they'll get crunched over and uh, you won't be able to use the seat belts you're gonna want to pull this through there's a little pocket that you can kind of see right there you want to pull it through that pocket as you're pushing it down other than that everything's good seat belts are working